<clears throat> okay, I had a student uh, email me and was a little bit confused with this problem. It was, a, it was an Excel simulation. And it says to compute the present value of $4,800 paid in two years using the following discount rates. 8% in the first year, 7% in the second year. It says do not round intermediate calculations and round your answer to do two decimal places. Um, and then they took these numbers and put them here in an Excel, in a simulated Excel spreadsheet. So I went ahead and I, I, I copied this problem so, so that we have all these are in the same, like this 4800 is in, and I'll call them A, B, A, B, C, D, 7. And I have it in the same place. I have it in D7. So I tried to basically take this problem and replicate it in real Excel so I can show you how to pro do this. So the first thing you've got to understand what the problem is asking. And a lot of times for financial analysis, it's, it's, it's actually good to draw a cash flow diagram. So I'm going to draw a cash flow diagram so you can see what's going on. So the way you draw a cash flow diagram in Excel, the way I do it, is I go up here into the, into the Home tab, into the Font group, and then you can go right here. And if you go down to the bottom, it says Draw Border. But before I draw a border, I want the line to be a little bit thicker than the thin line. I'll use like this thickness. And then you'll get a pencil. And this is a two-year thing. So I'm going to go, let me go ahead and I'm going to move this aside because we don't need it anymore. Um, I'm going to draw the cash flow diagram over here. So we have, let me go back to, the, back to this and pick up my pencil again. So we have one, two years. And we know in two years we're going to get, Let's just say we're going to get $4,800. And we want to know what the present value of that is. Okay. And so we're going to go 0, 1, 2. Now we could say it the other way. We, let me go, I could say, let me go control Z. It might make more sense if we say, uh, I'm going to go back and draw this again. Maybe... It's going to be a cash flow out of $4,800. And what do I need right now in order to pay $4,800? So one with Excel, one has to be positive and another cash flow has to be negative for it to be equal. So here we could go, I'm going to go equals $4,800. Now the reason I didn't put a negative $4,800 because the down, the arrow pointing down already means negative. And we want to know the present value of that. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go present value. What is it? Okay, I guess this should be a capital, right? And we also have um, your time zero, one, and two. So this is basically, if you're visually oriented, this makes a lot more sense to you because sometimes these words, so they want to know the present value of $4,800 paid in two years. So since, I guess since they said it's paid, then that means it's a cash flow out because we paid it, right? So it's a negative $4,800 in two years. We want to know what the value is right now. Okay. But the thing is, we have two interest rates. So I'll put the interest rates here. Over year one, in the first year, the interest rates equal to 8%. And then the rate in the second year is equal to 7%. So whatever amount of money I'm investing here at year zero, for one year, it's going to earn 8%, and then for the next year, it's going to earn 7%. And then that amount of money, after I earn 8% over one year and 7% over another year, it's going to grow to $4,800. And I want to know what amount I start with. So so let's go ahead and uh, see if we can solve this now. So I'm going to put the solution right here. I'm not going to type solution. We know it's a solution. So the value two years from day, today, well, what's the value two years from today? It's right here. So I'm just going to go equals this and the value one year from day would be if i would take this 4800 and go and and go back to the present value one year i would have to i would i would i would i would, I would be over seven percent so what um, i could let's say this another way what amount of seven percent would grow to forty eight hundred dollars if i go back if i started right here what amount would i have to have right here and that amount would earn 7% over one year, what amount would it be in order to get $4,800? Well, I could use um, the present value uh, function on Excel. Or the, uh, let, me, let me do the algebra formula. It's just going to be simply equal to um, this amount here 
divided by parentheses 1 plus that 7%. Okay. And so I would need $4,885.98. It says that to round it two places, so I rounded it to two. So, so I've already answered two of the questions here. Let me highlight these yellow and I'll put the formula in here. And then finally, now we're, now we have this amount and we want to go back and calculate the present value from this amount. So I could go equals, um, this amount here divided by parentheses one plus this 8% that I'm going back over. And I have that amount there. Okay. Now, if I just wanted to jump from this to this, if I was using algebra, I could say equals this divided by parentheses, parentheses, 1 plus the 7% times parentheses 1 plus the 8%. So I could do it all in one step that way. Oh, I forgot to add the extra parentheses, and I get the same answer at the end. So if I was just trying to get the present value, I could just do it all in one step like that. But this problem asked for two, it asked for the, it wanted us to find the, find this amount here too, so that's why I did it in a two-step method. All right, so another way we could do it, we could actually just use Excel and we use the present value formula. So I could go equals, again, we start out at $4,800. And now I could use the present value formula. So I could go equals present value. The rate over this first year is one year, or 7%. Uh, there's no payment, so I'm, I'm going to skip. Whoop, I'm sorry. Let's, let me show you how this works first before we start. So I go present value parentheses. Now the first thing it asks for is the rate. See how it's in bold here? Um, so the rate is asking for, well, what are you discounting it back? Well, we're using the 7%. And we're going to, and it says the number of periods, this end person asks for a number of periods. I'm going to discount it back one year. And there's no payment. This is a future value. Now with Excel, we got to be careful. It's not, this is math. So math doesn't care about the direction of cash flows. But Excel pays attention to the direction of cash flows. And we have this 4,800 pointing down, and that down arrow means negative. So I need to Excel, tell Excel this is, a, a, this is like a negative cash flow. It's money being paid, right? It says it's being paid up here. So I have to put in a negative $4,800. And then I, I don't have to close the parentheses, but I go ahead and do it. And I get the same answer I had up there, okay? And then finally, I would do it one more time. I would go equals present value. Now, the see, it's asking and asking you here. Now, if you don't, well, you're learning it. One thing you can do after you hit this parentheses, you can go up here and hit this little function wizard thing, and it brings up an argument box, and you can actually put them in here too. So it's asking for the rate, and it tells you what it wants down here. The rate is the periodic interest. So it wants this 8%. The number of periods, again, is one year. There's no payment. Now, I could not put anything in there, or I could type zero. I'll just choose not to put anything here. And the future value this time is a negative whatever there was at the end of year one. Don't worry about type, and then if I go OK, I get the same answer I got up here. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now, one thing you cannot do on this Excel simulation is it doesn't allow you to go pick up a calculator and do it. It wants you to, to code in the formula. So if you would just type 4800 in there, it's going to mark it wrong. You have to use Excel. Yeah. One thing, one rule of Excel, if it's already typed somewhere, you should go equals that, right? You shouldn't type 4800. You should go equals wherever that 400 is. Now I could have typed K18, but or I use K18, right? I could have, here. I actually I should have used. I could have said equals that, right? Because that's what your book is asking, looking for D7. Your book's not looking for what we did over here. And this should be equal to the 4,800 divided by parentheses 1 plus the second year is a 7%, right? And this should be equal to this 
divided by a parentheses one plus whatever interest rate first year it earned, right? So I shouldn't be using this because it's going to mark it wrong because the book I didn't have this, you know, I went, it only the book only has this, and this should be equal to. Well, don't even worry. Don't even do this because the book probably won't like it. And then this one should be equal to that. And this should be equal to present value. The rate, we want the second year, comma, number of periods is one, comma, comma. Whoop. Skip the payments, comma, comma. And the future value is a, uh, a negative that. Right? Or we could say, well, you get the idea. All right, so you want to use these numbers, not these numbers over here when you put it in. So hopefully that makes sense. The more you use Excel, the easier it is. So don't let this problem scare you. Um, and that's it for now. Hope, hopefully that helped. I'm going to have my picture come up here. And if you like this video and you want to subscribe, click on my picture. It'll let you subscribe to the channel. Also hit a like if you like light. Thank you. Bye-bye.